Hey everyone, welcome back to another uh, Python programming tutorial. In these couple of videos, I'm going to be looking at Unix-specific services in the Python library. Uh, obviously, the Python modules that I've been looking at. This time, we're going to be looking at specifically Unix and Linux stuff. So, this first thing that I want to check out is PWD, which is the password database. You can see right here, I've got the documentation open up online. And this module provides access to the Unix user account and password database. It's available on all Unix versions, and I'm on Ubuntu right now, so we should be okay to kind of play with this and, and, and toy with it. So, what you get returned from any of the functions in this module are entries that are reported as tuple or tuple-like objects, and their attributes obviously correspond to members of the passwd or password structure. And you can see all of these things here below in the table that have different meanings, like the attributes PW name refers to the login name or like the username of the account. The uh, password or pass uh, WD is typically an optional encrypted password, so you can kind of see the password or at least the encrypted password of the users on your system, and that's kind of cool. So that's kind of the reason I wanted to show you this this module and start this new kind of series uh, with the Unix specific stuff. But let's keep going. The, obviously, the user ID of the user and the group ID. Um, there are some other stuff. I don't honestly know what the GE code or the comment field is. Um, and of course, we have the user's home directory and their typical command line interpreter or shell. So, like it says here in the description, the UID and the GID for user ID and group ID are integers. All the other things are typically strings. And if you try to uh, index something that isn't in the array or you don't have the attribute in the in the tuple, sorry. Uh, you'll you'll receive a key error. So that's that's what's raised if you can't find anything. So there are a few functions that this has: uh, get pw user id, and this will search for the password uh, kind of database entry with the user id of the user. Like it says here, return the password database entry for the given user id. You pass in just an integer there. Uh, this next one, get pw nam or nam, returns the password database entry for the given username. And you pass in a string there, and get pw all returns a list of all the password database entries in pretty much a random order. This doesn't take any arguments. So let's take a look at these. This pw all is what I'll look at first. I'll fire up my shell here. I'm just going to work in idle, the Python interpreter. So let's import pwd, and the function that we're going to want to work with first is get pw all. So, like it says here, there are no arguments, and we'll return this list of entries and it'll return a list of all the available password database entries in arbitrary order, just like it says in our documentation. So we check this out, bam, we get a whole lot of stuff. Now this is, again, for all of the users on your system. You know, like root, of course, up here. Um, let's see, what else can I find? I'm trying to see others. Games? I don't honestly know what this is. I know there should be things for, like, Pulse Audio and other kind of, like, system users uh, that GNATs, system users that you don't normally see, like syslog and message bus, that obviously aren't your user accounts that you can log in with. Like they say here, uh, the shells often are, let me see if I can find one, no login, right? User shell is no login, because you can't really actually interact and use the computer as this user. There is, of course, a my user right down here, uh, struck password, pw, name is John, and, uh, You'll notice that in a lot of these, the PW password spot is just an X. I kind of really wonder why that is, um, but we'll get into it real, real soon. Let's take a look at the other functions here. It's PWD, get PW NAM, just like we were looking at earlier. And again, this takes in the user username, return the password database for a given username. So if I give it John, like I told you my, my user account name, you'll notice that we get the same struct with the PW name, John, and the user ID information, and all this stuff right here. So, that's what we can use, of course, to use that same PWD get PW user ID. This took time, of course, you'd pass in just an ID number. I know John, the that user account, is 1000, because we can see it right there. So will pass that in as an integer, and we should get the exact same result, of course, because it's uh, the same John account. Remember, if I try and pass in something that, like, doesn't exist, like, two? Okay, I guess we got bin, which does exist. Whatever. <laughs> Bad example. Let's say 2,000. Give it something that it doesn't have. Awesome. We get our key error, a key error, sorry, 
user ID is not found in 2000. So, like I was saying earlier though, I'm very interested in what this uh, X is whenever we actually want to see the encrypted password of this user. Get PW. There we go. See, PW password is an X. Now, why is that? I want to be able to see the encrypted user password. So, let's check out the documentation one more time. I skipped over this when I was just introducing the video, but there's a note here. In traditional Unix, the field PW password, or passwd, usually contains a password encrypted with a DES-derived algorithm. See the module crypt, which we'll get into real, real soon. However, most modern Unixes only use a so-called shadow password system. So, for those, the units is the PW password field only contains an asterisk, this right here, or the letter X, where the encrypted password is stored in a file, etc. shadow, which is not world readable. However, the PW password field contains anything user useful that is system dependent. If available, the SPW password, SPWD module, sorry, uh, should be used where access to the encrypted password is required. Okay, so that's a lot of really interesting information. What the things that I want to comment on are on the Unix systems where the PW password field only contains an asterisk, I'm pretty sure the asterisk refers to the fact that the account is disabled. I'm not 100% certain on that, don't trust me, but if you want to do a little bit of research, I believe that's what that asterisk means, the account is disabled. The letter X, like the one that we've been seeing, or at least I'm seeing on my system, is where the encrypted password is stored in the etc. shadow file, which is not world readable. Um, Normally, it's getting this all, all of these password database entries from the uh, password structure, like we know is uh, stored in, in our Unix system as etc. password or passwd. So let's take a look at that in a terminal. I'll actually uh, check out uh, old cat the file etc. passwd. And this is actually readable right now, surprisingly. And you can see all of these different users like we were looking at beforehand. Like I saw Nats and Syslog and uh, Pulse Audio is probably way down at the bottom or something. Oh yeah, Pulse. And then of course you saw John, my account right there. And the same thing here, this field, the first index, it looks like the indexes in the attributes uh, actually correspond with where they are in the etc. password file, separated by colons, you can see. But this X still refers to that the password is hidden in a different file that's in uh, etc. shadow. So, for experiment's sake, let's, let's make something interesting. I want to add a user, let's say, that we can kind of play with their password and try and understand it. So, I want to uh, run sudo user add to add a new user. And remember, you need the sudo command to actually run this with root privileges. And let's say the username can be foobar. I'll enter my password here. You might need to do the same. And now we should have a new user, Fubar. Actually, uh, I'm going to delete that because I want to be able to set the password. So, all right, I, I won't delete it, but I'll say sudo passwd Fubar to be able to change its, its, its password. And let's say the enter, enter the new Unix password. I'm just going to say something really simple, something pretty easy to crack, like in a, in a, in a dictionary, just like apples. That's what I typed in. Let's type it again, apples. And now, okay, the password uh, updated successfully. I think we can log in as him with su hyphen uh, login. Uh, I think it's okay. Fubarn, maybe not. And I'll log in with my password apples. Authentication failure. Okay, cool. I must have typed it in uh, accidentally. So now, if I say, "Who am I?" my user currently is foobar because we logged in as, as foobar. So that's the account that we just created and if I check it out in the etc. password folder um, oh, passwd that, that file, sorry. You'll see that foobar is way down here. We just added him. He's got the new 1001 user ID and his password is still X. So his password must be stored in etc. shadow which is a, a different file, like we saw here, different from etc. password or passwd. So normally, you'd use this spwd module to try and read those and actually get more information rather than this pwd password database. But you can still use this module 
to kind of get a little bit of information about the user. And that's kind of wanted, why I wanted to show you this module and uh, introduce this thing to you so you can know what is available to you for on Linux and like Unix specific services in Python. And we'll get a little bit more of an understanding as to where the passwords are stored and it's set a password and how Python reads it, what it's seeing, where the indexes and attributes come from and that sort of thing. So hopefully this has been useful for you. Um, this was kind of a really interesting and kind of fun program, uh, program and tutorial to think up and get towards you. So hopefully in the next one, we'll look at SPWD, that module. And very soon after that, we'll look at Crypt, the next module to play with the passwords. So hope you enjoy this and I'll see you in the next tutorial.